All right, so I wanted to walk through one of the Hardy-Weinberg problems. Uh, this was one that Jack Lake and I talked through uh, earlier today. It took me a little bit to get my camera settings right, so it's finally uh, set. But if you guys do have any questions on this, this is just one of the practice problems that we worked on. Uh, so the question says, in corn, purple kernels are dominant to yellow kernels. Um, this is in a population that's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And there's a random sample of 100 kernels found. See if we can change that. 100 kernels found, and 91 of them were purple, and nine of them were yellow. So, given that, if you have two phenotypes, you have a yellow and, or sorry, a purple and a yellow phenotype, um, it's saying that 91 of those are the purple phenotype, and that um, nine of them are the yellow phenotype. Now, remember, the phenotype and the genotype are two different things. So, because of that, that means that you have to uh, figure out what the allele frequency is uh, from this phenotypic frequency, uh, which in this case is 91 over 100 versus 9 over 100. Um, so, when we're doing this, uh, the first thing we need to remember is that we have two ways uh, that the Hardy Weinberg equ uh, equation uses to figure this out. And generally, uh, it's going to be based around this idea of this equation here. So, with this, you have P, lowercase p, squared, plus 2PQ, plus Q squared. All right, so this equation is going to help you to figure out uh, what the allele frequency is uh, for this. Uh, you also know because of this um, that uh, with each of these, you know that uh, this other equation, P plus Q equals 1, and this, sorry, equals 1. I meant to write that. Um, so each of these two equations is going to be equal to 1. So what do these actually mean? Well, for each of these two alleles, either a, a capital Y, which we're representing as purple, I didn't want to use P here, uh, even though this is the dominant allele, um, because I didn't want you to get confused between that P and the P that is represented in these two equations. So if we think about this allele as being represented by P in this equation, all right, and the yellow allele, which is a lowercase y, is represented by the letter q. So when we look at each of these uh, two, what this equation is saying is that if you look at all of the phenotypes, all right, you know you're going to have some homozygous dominant, uh, you're going to have homozygous dominant whatever organisms they are. In this case, these are purple, uh, these are purple kernels of corn. So you're going to have two purple alleles, which are going to be two capital Ys. Here, uh, we're going to just represent, this is just a general way of representing the alleles. Um, so there are two possible uh, purple alleles in the homozygous dominant uh, category. Then you're going to have some potential for heterozygous individuals. In this case, uh, it would be a capital Y and a lowercase y, or in other words, those are the kernels that might have one recessive allele, but might still show up as purple. So in this case, you have a P that's represented by a P and a Q. And then finally, you have the uh, the last example, which is one of the numbers that they give us, which is uh, one of the things that's going to help us to actually determine these answers that we're looking for. So Q squared is actually showing the uh, the in this case fraction or the proportion of uh, of these that are only going to be homozygous recessive. So uh, one of the ways you can actually figure this out is if you have, uh, so we know that there are nine out of the nine, uh, nine out of the 100 that are going to be, uh, that are going to be only yellow. Um, and if you know that Q squared is going to be equal to, so if Q squared is going to be equal to um, 0 0.09, all right. In other words, that's the uh, that's the that's the proportion of uh, this particular allele that is uh, going to be showing up in homozygous recessive uh, versions of this. So, if Q squared is equal to 0 0.09, then we need to solve for Q. And we can simply take the square root of each of these, 
All right, square root of q squared is just q, and the square root of 0 0.09 is going to be 0.3. All right, so q in this case is 0.3. And hopefully you can see from now uh, that if we know q, and we know that p plus q equals 1, in other words, all of the alleles that are the dominant allele and all of the alleles that are recessive alleles, uh, as long as those two are added together, that represents all of the alleles in this uh, 100 kernel sample. And therefore, uh, that's going to add up to a total of 1. So if Q is equal to 0 0.03, then we know that P is going to be equal to 0 0.7. Rewrite this, 0 0.3. All right, and then we just need to figure out, um, in this case, if we're trying to figure out the actual uh, number of each of these alleles, in other words, the allele frequency, uh, then we can use uh, each of these parts of the equation. So if there are 100 kernel, uh, total kernels of corn, then that means that there's 200 total alleles, assuming that each kernel has its own is formed by two separate alleles, which that's the assumption in this case. So if you have 200 total alleles, how many of those alleles are actually going to be represented by the dominant or the recessive allele? So in this case, uh, we know that out of the 200 possible alleles for the recessive, that we're going to be able to get that number calculated. So to calculate that final number, we're going to get P squared. All of my markers are dying on me here. So I'm going to be writing in purple, but this is not only representing this uh, group. So if you have p squared plus 2pq plus q squared, all right, if you have this, uh, we know now that since p is equal to 0.7, you're going to have 0 0.7 squared plus 2 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 squared. Uh, just barely shows up at the edge of the screen. So 0.7 squared is going to be 0.49. Alright, and this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be the number, of, sorry, this is going to be the proportion of the individuals in this example that are going to be homozygous dominant. In other words, these both have a capital Y and a capital Y. So if we add that together, we have 0.7 times 0.3, uh, which is going to be uh, 0.21 uh, times 2, which is going to be 0.42. So for this part, sorry, I just had to pause that for a second. Um, so for this part, you have 0.7 times 0.3 times 2. So 0.7 times 0.3 is going to be 0.21. And uh, 2 times that is going to be 0.42. And this is the number of individuals that are capital Y, lowercase y. In other words, they're heterozygous. So some yellow, and sorry, some purple and some yellow alleles. And then finally, the last proportion is going to be 0.3 squared, which is going to be the same thing as 0 0.09. And this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the number uh, or the portion proportion of the y uh, y, which is lower or sorry, two lowercase y's, which is the homozygous recessive allele. So this is just showing you. This is the allele frequency, um, of the, or sorry, the genotypic frequency of this particular example. Um, and the allele frequency is right here. So this is the allele frequency. All right. And this is the, uh, this is the genotypic frequency right here. Uh, if you have any questions on this, let me know.